This is an example of one of the training videos in our FileMaker certification preparation course at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. The let function is one of my favorites, but it can also be a little complex and overwhelming if you haven't ever broken it down into its pieces. It's hard to fit that whole format on just one line and it can return pretty much anything. So it has a lot of power, but it also has some complexity to it. The main thing you want to think of is variables. We're going to go right into the data viewer and anytime there's a long complex description, I like to break it down into pieces to better understand it. So we have this let function. So we know that goes there and we have this calculation part and then we have these curly brackets that go all the way out to here with the square brackets going here so when you break it down vertically like this all of this is part of the parentheses but this is the declaration of the variables and anything after the semicolon is the calculation part and now every time I write a let statement, I write it like this instead of like this, just to help me remember what these are like. And some might want to put this up here is just it always starts this way and has this and this and whatever helps you see it the best. As long as you recognize there's basically two parts, the declaration of variables and then whatever calculation that you want. So simply put, you just put in a variable a equals one and then the calculation a and it results with that. It's also not case sensitive. It's you can use the dollar sign if you want, uh, which you normally do variables, but you don't have to in this instance. And this variable doesn't even have to be down here. It could just be two plus three, which is five. And if you want to do multiple variables, then you could do B equals three. And down here, you could have A plus B. You just have to be consistent with your variables. So it is just a fast way of doing variables. And a lot of people might say, well, why not just do this? Why are we setting these variables? Well, this is because variables have a lot of power. Suppose you wanted to calculate days to the new year on the fly. And so you have to put in the new year's date with the get current date minus the current date. So you can figure that out. And then you decide, oh, wait, I want to know how many minutes is that? So now you're going to have to copy this whole thing and add some characters we're going to paste this and we want to know minutes so that means we have to take this whole thing i think to here and we want to multiply that by uh, no this should have been hours so we have to change this to hours so now that's the number of hours oh but what if we do want to do minutes now we got to copy this whole thing again and we go through and I'll, I've already done that. So I'll just show you. We had to do all this to try and get this. And after you've done this, if you're like, wait, I want to know how many to my birthday. And we did it for the new year. You'd have to change basically everything here to get that information. Using the let function allows you to declare variables that can be used in the scope of the script. It just looks much cleaner, easier to understand. You can have pretty much as many variables as you like, and the calculation can be quite complex as well. And if you need to change something with all of this, like the target date, maybe you want to go to the May the 4th party for some reason, and you want to have that day, then you can simply change a couple of things and you've got those calculations much easier than the other way. But most importantly, whenever you see the let function, break it down into its two components here, the declaration and the calculation, and it will all be much clearer. 
One other note about variables in a let statement, we have a similar one. I've got the one without the dollar sign, the local and a global variable. And just so you can see, currently there are no global variables happening here. If we go outside of the let statement and we just add, for example, a, that variable, it doesn't recognize it. It doesn't go outside of the scope. But if we put a dollar sign, this variable does go outside of that scope as well of, as the global, of course. When we give it a value of three, we have declared it in here and now it actually shows up over here. So I set up a layout with some text fields that are set to auto enter the calculation of that same data viewer that we had. One is local and this one is global. So if we simply do a new record, this is the global one, it became a five and it also now changed this. If I just switch quickly between here and here, notice it goes back to three because of what is in the watch statement. So be careful when you're using globals or other variables that you know the scope and where they could be seen in other places. That's the let function. It's used throughout this course in several places, but this is something I would practice with so you get used to the text and how it's written and how to read it. I hope you enjoyed this sample from our FileMaker certification preparation course. Visit ProductiveComputingUniversity.com for more information about the certification preparation course and other training to help you save time as a FileMaker developer.